but uh, thank you for doing this. I know we've been kind of going back and forth for a little while, so I'm glad we were able to to sync up. Yeah, me too. We need to start with our mutual connection. I mean, we have oh, to yes. start with Barry. Yes. <laughs> you, your grandfather, Barry Corbin, yeah. is was obviously played Coach Whitey on One Tree Hill, who I just adore. Did you ever come to Wilmington to visit us? Yes. So I have a picture of, um, I know I got a picture with you, but I don't, I can't find it. I'm trying to track oh, it down. No, we gotta find um, it. I think I was, I was like 13. Um, so it was right before I got into high school. And I came with him to Wilmington and I visited, it was on like the first season. And uh, I remember specifically, and I've been waiting to to go in depth about this, but I was super nervous because all of you, you know, we're, we're playing high schoolers, but we're all older than me. And like, we're, it was like this group of like these older attractive people. And I'm like, I don't look anything like that. And I'm about to be in high school. Like I'm going to, I'm going to stick out. And, uh, but all of you were so warm and welcoming, but especially you and Hillary and Sophia. Um, I remember I didn't have like a lot of interactions with you. We were only there a couple of days, but you, me and my sister, all three of you were the first ones to come up and say hi and like take pictures with us. And we're so sweet getting to see all like y'all's really, even in the first season, how close everyone was and how kind everyone was and welcoming. And it made me. I've, I've genuinely carried that experience with me because I've always told myself if I'm ever part of a show where other people are coming and visiting set or, you know, there's a day player or a guest star, I want to be just as warm and welcoming as all of them were. Uh, so, yeah. So thank you for that. It makes me so happy to hear because I've I've had that experience when I was younger before I was working on a show and the same kinds of things with the people that I would run into. And it really does make an impact on you. Um especially as you go into that field, thinking yeah. about how you felt before you were in this successful position and how you would want to, how, how you liked to be treated. Yeah. To make sure that you extend that as well. My grandpa being on One Tree Hill kind of gave me some street cred in high school because I was like picked on so badly and bullied. And then a little later on, once he kind of started to catch wind of me being bullied, uh, he started like a few times he would come up to school to be like, to bring me, um, you know, my inhaler or lunch or something just so people could see me interacting with him. And then as soon as he'd leave, people are like, wait, you know, coach Whitey. And it was like, it kind of helped me, um, you know, establish myself in school. Do you remember one? I can't remember what year it was. I think it was still pretty early on, but when my grandpa got mugged and like beat up pretty bad. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that, Jordan. Yeah. I was that in Wilmington. Yeah. So he was, he yeah. always had like his little, like, uh, you know, tiny bar that he would find and hang That's out and right. play like his trivia games and stuff. Um, and that was kind of like, he found his spot out there. And one day he was walking back to his apartment and a couple of guys approached him and they mugged him, but he, he got him back. One of the guys, I guess, he kicked he dislocated his kneecap or something because he fought yeah back. he did and uh Barry Corbett's a badass yeah right and he didn't go to the hospital he went back home and uh he just sent my mom a picture of his like beat up face the next morning and uh she was like you need to go get that looked at so they had to do like extensive makeup for the next couple of weeks for him but oh gosh, um I remember that yeah he's a tough I'm guy though upset. he is such a tough dude man yeah he's uh always been someone that that fights back and will stand up for other people when he needs to. But just whenever you're talking to him one-on-one, -on -one, he's like the biggest, biggest teddy bear. Yeah. I love that. I, and I love that he would come to your high school too. And just to make that impression, I, man, high school is the worst. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Middle school might've been the worst. I like, I had horrible, horrible bullies when I moved from Texas to New Jersey because I was this like Southern blonde kid with big white teeth and just, you know, so excited. Hi, I'm, you know, from Texas. Yeah. And uh, the Jersey girls were not having it. And uh, I got there and yeah, it was rough. I had girls that like, it was the, just for whatever reason, the queen bee of the, of the school didn't like me and got, she was threatened. They would, they would spit on me when I walked by. The horrible rumors were spread. They wow. like they put dog shit in my locker once. They threw dog shit at me when I was bought. Like it was just horrendous. It got to the point where I would start going to the nurse's office every day. And I would, the nurse had this little, 
it was a, it was two a two room thing. There was a, a separate room for the bathroom, but it was connected to her office, um, and you could hear it was very thin walls. So I would, I would steal a Dixie cup and I would go in the bathroom and fill it up with water. And then I would make sounds like I was puking and throw the water into the toilet. So she would think I was sick and send me home. Oh man. And I did that enough that, um, I, eventually my, my parents just pulled me out of school and homeschooled me until we found a, a better school. Um, but you know, kids will find any, any reason, so many kids will find any, and I'm seeing it now, my daughter is 11 and she's a great kid. And that's one of the things she knows I will never tolerate is you don't make fun of people. You don't yeah. spread rumors. You don't just, if somebody, if somebody's being mean to you, it's the sort of turn the other cheek thing. Stand up for yourself if you need to. I'm a very eighties mom. Do, you know, don't start a fight, but you better finish it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But she's a great kid, but the things that she tells me, she comes home from school, the stuff that the kids are making fun of people for, or the rumors that they're spreading, or it's just crazy. Yeah. How did you hold on to the hope that you had that? Cause so many kids just experience things like that, that kind of bullying and they just go into despair and that's, it's the end of the world. And, yeah. you know, for many of them, it unfortunately becomes the end of their world. Right. Yeah. So where, where did that hope come for you? It was, so my mom, my grandpa, and uh, my my adopted grandpa, the three of them are the most optimistic, loving. My, my adopted grandpa passed away a couple of years ago, but they were the most optimistic, loving, patient people in the world. Um, and they taught me a lot of that. And then I think being in and out of the hospital so much uh, taught me patience and just to kind of trust the process because there were so many times. No yeah, yeah. But also genuinely acting my love for that um i i just knew that's what i wanted to do and that yeah. made me so happy once you got one tree hill it's the type of job that like every actor dreams of that type of like security and consistency and getting to play one character for several years and like form these bonds with with your castmates and the crew um but and i'm so so blessed and grateful to be uh in the middle of a, of the chosen and we're starting season three at the end of April. And like we so have excited. seven seasons planned and um, maybe more. We might do the Book of Acts. We'll see. But uh, it's it's one of those things that I'm already, uh, since I'm such a worrier, I'm already like, one, the thought of not having the show to come back to, like once it's over, the thought of mm -hmm. not getting to be with all these people again um, is scary. And then also... Uh, acting wise and, and as far as my career it's like the fear of like okay you know how can I keep this ball rolling once we're done uh did you encounter anything similar while you were doing One Tree Hill or after did you did you go through any like withdrawals or fears once it ended um yeah when the show ended I it, I mean we had been on for 10 seasons which is kind of career suicide for anybody on in TV because it, well, it was at that time. Nowadays, right. I feel like there's a big shift and there's a lot of people who are on TV that are doing movies and doing lots of other things. Yeah. But back then, that cultural movement was kind of just starting and, and um, there weren't really movie stars doing TV shows at the time. So there was a pretty, there was a segregation there between TV and movies. Um, and when you were on a series for 10 years, by the end of it, it was old hat, it was old news. It was like, oh, oh the... I think there was a, I perceived that there was a perception within the industry of like actors who stay on a show that long have gotten complacent and they're, they're not real artists. They're just happy to take the paycheck and, and hang out. Yeah. Um, so when I got off that show, I also got divorced that same year and I had a one-year-old and the entire community of friends that I had been a part of for a long time all shut me out at at once it was um, a really controlling environment that was spiritually based and uh, it was unfortunately um incredibly unhealthy and when i when i got out of it it was like everything my whole world just crashed and i moved to LA with a one-year-old and no career. All the casting directors in town knew me. Everybody, you know, was like, oh yeah, Joy's great. We love Joy, but you know, she's not really like hot anymore. And there's, and, and so much of this industry is timing and, and being 
being hot, being the it girl. Yeah. And um, that time really passed me by when it, in my early twenties, when I was getting the offers, when I was, you know, it, in the room with all the big other stars and, you know, those things were happening and I turned a lot of things down. Yeah. I, I was really flailing when the show came to an end and I did a lot of guest stars. I did a lot of um, arcs, recurring arcs on TV shows and just little things that, and I lived on those and residuals. There were months when I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make rent. And this is after being on a series for 10 years. Nobody would ever think that. Called my managers. I called everybody. And I said, guys, I'm going to make sweaters on Etsy. I'm going to sing. I don't know what I'm, I'm going to make candles. I'm done acting. I can't do this anymore. I don't have it in me for the, the rejection anymore. And a couple months later, somebody, my, one of my agents sent me an, um, an audition for something I had turned down before. And it was Pearson, the um, Gina Torres suit spinoff. And I got it. And it was like, suddenly I'm back on a series and suddenly I'm in the Hollywood reporter and suddenly, boom, just like that. After that massive dip in years and years, and then everything's just been snowballing upwards since then. Since we do talk a lot about insecurities and things we've struggled with, uh, what's the thing you love most about yourself? God bless you. Um, it's so sweet. I ask my daughter this at night sometimes when we're going to bed. Aww. I never ask myself. Um, oh, the thing I love the most about myself, I don't know. Um, I guess I I do feel like um, I'm I'm good at people, even though I say I have a hard time with um, being vulnerable and relationships, which I I do. But I think I'm a good friend. I will forget your birthday, but I <laughs> but I am a good friend, <laughs> and um, I have I have a big heart. I I really like. I think I'm good at reading people listening I mean I've been through enough I've, like I said life really kicked my ass so I, I yeah. feel much more open-minded now than I ever did before and um I feel settled in that space with myself so even when everything else is falling apart and going badly I still kind of when I look in the mirror I feel like I like you I I, I don't like all the things but I, I like you joy yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of a vague answer, but no, I, that's good. Um, I think, yeah. I think it's apparent, like you saying that you're good with people and a good friend. Like I, I that's apparent in just this past hour. So thank you for having me. This is such a lovely way to start the day. And I really yeah. enjoyed talking with you.